Curtain Jerks is brought to you by Audible.com. Get your free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android. Whoa! <coughs> Lightning! <coughs> Smoke! <coughs> yeah! Mm-hmm. Love to read! Yeah! Uh-huh. Macho Good man, times! Macho Man Randy Savage, what are you doing here? Yeah, love to read. Talking about reading. Yeah, got a book right here. Uh-huh. Hey, wait a minute. You know, with audible.com backslash audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network. There's a lot of slashes in there. I don't know if any of those are accurate. <laughs> really? Let me try that again. Uh, you know, at audibletrial.com slash comedy podcast network, you can read things with your ears on your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, or your MP3 player. What do you mean? I don't have to pick up a book no more. Yeah, you had the most muscular pinky I'd ever seen when you that, picked up that book. That's right. The the uh, See, the problem is that I have with books is they're my enemy, yeah. Because I always get paper cuts. That's why I always got tape on my fingers, uh-huh. Macho Man Randy Savage, Macho Man Randy Savage, you don't have to cut your fingers anymore on books. You can listen to these books. No more paper cuts? No more paper cuts. The beauty of Audible is I got no more paper cuts, so I can read even more with my ears. That sounds like a hell of a slogan. The beauty of Audible is no more paper cuts. No more paper cuts for the Macho Man, uh-huh. Huh, no. So you telling me that I gotta pay for no more paper cuts? See, that's the beauty part, Macho Man Randy Savage. With this, you get a free audiobook once you use the uh, Curtain Jerks promo code. Free audiobook? Aha, uh-huh, yeah, I dig it. Mm-hmm. That's free, and then you're also gonna be free of paper cuts. Free of paper cuts, free of free downloads, free everything. Aha, uh-huh, the show is free. I like it. Aha. Uh-huh. You know what, Macho Man Randy Savage? You're welcome. Let's go to the circus. Let's do it. Welcome to Curtain Jerks right here on the Comedy Podcast Network. I'm Scott Narver. And I'm Steve Sears. And today we have a very special guest, uh, a foreign exchange, I can't even say it right, a foreign exchange <laughs> student, as it were. Uh, this guy does a lot. He uh, is an alumni of the Second City. He works at the Second City. He uh, directs. He directs. He writes. He directs On Your Mark, mm-hmm. which we've talked about in the past. He's an original curtain jerks co-host which is the most important credit of all he works with laugh on behalf which i'm sure we're going to hear about a little bit later on and fresh back from japan please welcome to the podcast mark orzeka hi phil <laughs> i'm scott you've oh. already forgotten who we are uh, <laughs> no it's great to be back it's always awesome to be back on the show thanks for having me absolutely you you went to japan I just got back from Japan yesterday. And you gained an extra Tuesday, correct? Yeah, I got an entirely extra Tuesday. Mark lived two Tuesdays, everybody. Mm -hmm. Isn't that creepy? Explain how that works. Okay, so it's 17 hours ahead of Los Angeles. Uh, Currently, Japan is. and um, That's why everything's so futuristic there. (laughs) It doesn't change, right? It's always 17 hours ahead? No, because we do daylight savings and they don't. They don't? No. I love Japan So it alternates between 16 and 17 hour time difference, depending on if we're in daylight savings or not. Okay. So um, so I woke up Tuesday morning in Japan. I lived an entire day. You decided to go, right? Yeah. Well, I was already in Japan. Okay. <laughs> I was already in Japan. I'd been there for – I got to be in Japan in Tokyo for about a week. It was the first time I'd ever been there. But So the two Tuesdays was I woke up Tuesday in, uh, in Japan and um, it had an entire day in Japan, got on the plane to go home, and uh, flew all the way back here, which was a 12-hour flight. Mm-hmm. So – Japan time when I landed in um, Los Angeles. It That's what you yelled when you arrived in Japan. Right? Japan time. <laughs> when I landed in Los Angeles, uh, Japan time, it would have been Wednesday morning. Okay. But I went back in time then 17 hours. So it was actually here. It was Tuesday at like 1130 a.m. That's so, wild. so then I did Tuesday all over again. <laughs> so I had two Tuesdays. And I asked you this before, but now for the listeners, which was your favorite Tuesday? I think th- I think My American Tuesday, okay. if I'm being totally honest. Which is that name of that great foreign film, My American Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so people are probably wondering, like, well, so why is Mark on to talk about Japan? Well, first off, let's get into why you went to Japan. What okay. was the actual reason that you went to Japan? Well, I went to Japan to work for 
the Yoshimoto Comedy Company. Okay. Yoshimoto Comedy Company is they they dominate like ninety percent of the comedy business in is, Japan. Is that their slogan? <laughs> we, it, like that would be a we very dominate. Japanese thing for that to be their slogan. <laughs> we dominate. <laughs> Ninety uh, <laughs> percent, <laughs> but their their model, like the Japanese like entertainment industry, is set up differently than ours. It's much more. Um, is this the right term, Steve? Like more vertically integrated, where they do everything. They do film, TV, theater, management. Well, when you say all... when you say vertical, I immediately think, oh, great. So their comedians are probably treated very poorly. So vertically, I'd assume there's a lot of things stacked on top of them. But I think what you mean is horizontal in terms of all different facets of entertainment. That's like, what I mean. Like so, so marketing as well as being a mar- uh, uh, a manager for a, yeah. a comedian as well as being talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like of course here in the United States, these are these these things would be run by different companies. One company is your manager or what different company is your agent. A different company runs theaters, a different company runs TV, a different company runs film. In Japan, Yoshimoto dominates 90% of <laughs> comedy and they run all they do everything so if you sign with Yoshimoto they're your manager they're your agent they run theaters they run t- TV they run film 90% they dominate 90% of you yes they do wow. they dominate 90% of you so these guys these Yoshimoto comedians do all this stuff so they're trained to do all of these different things they do all of these different things and even when you make it big so the so they start you start out doing theater and Yoshimoto owns 12 different theaters across like Japan. comedy theaters comedy or? theaters so they dominate the comedy theater market dominate <laughs> they own 12 different comedy theaters all across Japan and they um they uh start all their and three in Tokyo okay. and they start all their comedians by doing you know live performances in theaters but then even when you make it big and you're performing on television and in films, you still perform in the theaters. You just add the TV and films on top of it. So you kind of just do it all there. It's very old school, like vaudeville. What it used to be here when like the vaudeville performers would do TV and film and vaudeville still. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's sort of structured like that. So anyways, what they don't do any of in Japan is sketch, sketch comedy the way we do it exactly. They don't really do that. And they particularly. In what way? What do you mean? Like writing their own? They don't do. Um, they and when you mean do... sketch comedy, you mean playful make em up uh, plays that uh, people do and put on without any props? They do. Well, they don't do like um, shows with. Sh- they don't do like a, a shows with short five, three to five minute sketches that are all different, like you would see on like Key and Peel or something today. Okay. They don't do that style of sketch comedy. And they don't do not do any improvisation whatsoever, which is a lot of what, of course, the three of us do here in in the U.S. And you know, it's like that that whose line is in any way style of improv. This is completely unfamiliar t- to them. So it's stringently scripted, like Mr. Eggplant. Yes, it's stringently scripted. So and, you were um, an ambassador. Yes. So 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 the reason they um they brought me in is this Yoshimoto company is experimenting with teaching improvisation to their comedians and they want to see if they could start to try it and how it'll work in Japan, if it'll work in Japan. So how did that come about? How did you get, how did you get chosen to do this job? Uh, I was not chosen. I was dominated. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, you were the young boy there. (laughs) I was the young boy. Um, Well, um, did you guys ever watch heroes on NBC? The NBC show heroes a little bit. No. So the, uh, (laughs) So the guy who was the um, the one of the leads of the show, he played the character Hero on Heroes. Yeah, he's the Japanese uh, titular actor. character. Yeah, he's a Japanese. That's actor. the name of the movie. <laughs> so his name is um, is uh, Masioka, and he um, went to Second City, LA, right? He did. He he's trained in improv. He's done comedy sports and theater sports in Second City. He's from Japan. He's got a foot in both worlds, and this was all his vision. He felt like. Jap- Japan is ready for and needs a new uh, improvisation okay. and this new style of comedy. So he reached out to Second City. Second City grabbed me and put me together with Yoshimoto. And Masi and I went together to Japan and co-taught workshops to c- current Yoshimoto comedians. Wow. 
So we taught for, for three days. We taught about 60 different comedians that are working comedians in Japan currently. Did mm-hmm. they take to it? Do you feel like they were pretty open to it? Or was it sort of this is an experimental HR sort of We thing? don't improvise like the West. Well, it, it, it was – there was a <laughs> – Like Mr. Baseball but yeah. with improv. There were, there were some real challenges. For the most part, it went very well and they were into it and took to it. Um, the, the younger, less experienced performers were much more open to it and took to it a lot more quickly than the older guys. One of the groups, they put the groups together by experience levels. And one of the groups we had was extremely experienced. And some, uh, like three of the guys in it were, were the most famous comedians in Japan. And, um, those guys in that group were the most challenging to teach okay because they they have their skill set engraved into them so any sort yeah. of d- deviation from it would be almost impossible yeah right? ingrained i said engraved right <laughs> uh <laughs> japanese wood blocking of the soul okay oh okay. Scott, <laughs> wood block carving of the soul okay so those guys were were the most inflexible i would say and it was a challenge to get them. Your Ric Flair's, your Hulk Hogan's. Like, how are yeah. you gonna change them? How are you gonna change their uh, move set? Well, Can't. it was like, it was like, they were wanting to get up and do their funny characters that they already do, mm-hmm. and I think they were nervous trying something new in front of their peers, and maybe not being and good at it, potentially they, failing, potentially failing in the in front of their peers, which we wouldn't know about on the show. Never happens. Never no, happens. Never fail. Never. That's, that's the motto of curtain jerks, right? Yeah. Curtain jerks never, never feel. feel. Tell them we sent you. Yeah. Never feel. You just said never, curtain jerks never feel. Never feel. It's, just, <laughs> it's engraved on our tombstone. Yeah, it's like the Goonies. Goonies never die. Curtain jerks never feel. So that was like the purpose of my trip. So most of the time I was there, I was working. But that wasn't the real purpose of your trip. Well, I had to get in some pro wrestling. Exactly. I am, Adventures. So, I am so jealous of you. I've always wanted to go to Japan. Really? Yeah. That's the one place I always want to go to. What would you want to do there? Wait, wait, wait. I, if I could culturally sort of uh, minimize this whole thing. How was the food? Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Unbelievable. The sushi's incredible. What? In Japan? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the McDonald's was great. The Burger King was great. The yeah. Wendy's was great. You had to walk into a McDonald's, right? I, I actually didn't go to any they do have all those, especially in Tokyo. There's not a million of them, but they have them. The chain that's really big in Tokyo is KFC. Really? Yeah, the the fast food chain that's the biggest of the U.S. fast food chains is KFC. And this is really pretty funny. They um, so they celebrate Christmas in Japan, and it's a it's a fairly big holiday, even though it's not a religious country and it's not a Christian country. So it's is it like a cultural holiday? Yeah, it's like a kitschy pop cultural commercial holiday. God, like Festivus. I love these people. And it's just like yeah. fun. Like all the stuff they have, the Christmas stuff, is just like fun, you know, like loud, bright, kind of anime influenced, like Santa decorations and stuff. It's cool as hell. But the the tradition is you go to KFC and buy like a traditional ch- a, like chicken dinner and eat this for Christmas and give each like, other gifts. Like the really? bucket? Yeah. Or do they have like a full rotisserie chicken like, or is it the bucket? It's not the bucket. It's like a special Christmas dinner meal that they send you, sell you of like, you know, uh, a chicken and mashed potatoes and, and vegetables. So this, so all over the KFCs all over Japan are all these Christmas, make your res- reservations now for Christmas. Oh my God. All these Christmas no way. Bags. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Oh my God. The that other sounds thing they incredible. Do, I know. <laughs> the other thing they do for Christmas is they do, <laughs> I, I took some pictures of this. I, I'll give them to you guys and we can put them on the, on the Curtain okay. Jerks Facebook. But so I'm looking at all the Christmas decorations, like this department store. And then there's all these like sexy Christmas outfits for women. And I'm like, I was like, what are these? And they're like, it's the, it's the sexy Christmas outfits for the for <laughs> girls. Stupid guy. <gaijin>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For girls. And I go, what? We don't, we don't have this in the United States. And they're like, you don't. And I go, no. And there's like these million different types of like sexy Santa outfits and elf outfits and Literally, sexy reindeer and snowman outfits. I was just going to ask, reindeer? Yes. So, like, this is so the, the Christmas peripherals? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and they're like, yes, you have this in, you have this in the United States. I'm like, no, we don't. And they go, yes, it's like for Halloween, the sexy costumes. All the girls wear the sexy costumes. And I go, yeah. And they're like, 
well, we have this for Halloween and Christmas. Oh, oh my shit. God. They've got two <laughs> Halloween. They're, they are so ahead of us. It's, it's not just 16 or 17 hours. Yeah, it's not hours. just 17 hours. They are culturally just light years ahead. <laughs> So, yeah. What a wonderful land. Yes, it is a wonderful uh, land. Feel free at any point when you're telling your story, if you do think of another amazing thing about Japan, just go into it. I'll go into it. Okay. So you were in Tokyo. That's where mm-hmm. you were. Yes, the whole time. Oh, so, so that's the mecca of Japan. Like, that's the that's their New York, basically. It like, is. It's the... bigger than New York, It's I be, and I believe something like a third of the Japanese population lives in Tokyo. Okay. Yeah. So when you were there... You started talking with people. You told us a little bit about this, that you yeah. started telling people that you're a professional wrestling fan. Yeah. Well, look, I, you know, I know this is a business trip and I was going to be working the whole time. But I was like, I've got to do some some rest. I have got to squeeze in some wrestling. It's you're called there. soul searching. It's called soul somehow. Searching. Yeah. This is like a dream to get to go because on someone else's dime on someone else's dime to get to go and be in Tokyo. And, and um, you know, I've been a fan of. Of course, of American professional wrestling, but I'm a big fan of Japanese professional wrestling. In the 90s, Funaki, Takamichinoku, <laughs> Yoshitatsu, <laughs> yeah, Yoshitatsu, Tensai. Uh, in the 90s, you know, it was really, um, it was really huge. Um, that was a lot of crossover. You had a lot of yes, like WCW events were going over there. Yes. Hogan was going over there. Flair, the Steiners, like yeah, you're seeing those mashup of worlds, like yeah. DC and Marvel crossover yeah the 90s the early to mid 90s was an enormous boom period in japan it was almost like what the monday night war period was here Mm -hmm. japanese wrestling all japan and new japan was huge the tv ratings were crazy they would play the tokyo dome regularly and sell out the tokyo dome which is like an eighty thousand seat building it was nuts and um all these big stars and it was a great great time and so I was following it. I would get the VHS tapes and follow it in the Observer and stuff. I was really into it. Then it crashed. There was a big crash in the 2000s. And it was off, it, it like, crashed hard. Um, unlike anything we've ever seen here in the States. Like, it crashed to the point where the TV shows were canceled. Really? Yeah, like it wasn't on TV anymore. It hasn't been on TV. And so, and, and dwindled. So dropped down to like getting a few thousand people per show. Okay. And was in really rough shape during the 2000s. But in the last couple of years, as some of our listeners might know, New Japan Professional Wrestling in particular, which is the the biggest promotion in Japan, Mm -hmm. um, has had a resurgence. And they're in a boom period right now. And they've kind of been heating up. And they're they're the number two company in the world now behind WWE. Do you know what turned the, what turned it around for him? Big, st- you know, it, it mainly was a new generation of great stars. And Hiroshi Tanahashi, who's their big star, is, you know, hands down, I think you know, a lot of people agree with him, the, the best wrestler in the world today. He's just like a total package. He's like got this, he's sort of like a, a got this John Cena type like charisma mm-hmm. and a Shawn Michaels work rate. Like, He's phenomenal. He's one of the best. What are his promos like? Who would you compare those to? (laughs) Well, they do promos a little differently there, but I don't know. Yeah, but who would you compare it to? You know, on American Yoshitatsu? Oh, all right. He's good. Like, he's won the Wrestling Observer Wrestler of the Year award for the last several years. He just got into the, I think think he's the youngest person ever to get in the Wrestling Observer Hall of Fame. Um, So, you know, he's been a big, big worldwide star. The Woff? So it's been, he, him and, and Okada is a huge star. And so these guys are like driving this resurgence. They're sort of like, a you know, the rock and Austin of this era of New Japan. Okay. So I think these big, these young, cool stars have ushered in this like new renaissance in, in New Japan right now. So that's where Vince Russo is booking right now is in New Japan. Yeah, exactly. Just making these <laughs> super cool uh, big matches. And- <laughs> yeah. So, um. So anyway, so so I got to go to um, you know, the mecca of all Japanese wrestling is is Korokan Hall, which is co- next to the Tokyo Dome, mm-hmm. and we don't quite have something like this in the United States. We don't have I, like a straight up like venue just for wrestling. No, well, Madison Square Garden was sort of it, and they act like it is, but they don't go there all the time anymore. Yeah, MSG would be like the closest kind of thing to it, or maybe like or the Philadelphia. Uh, the, the um, ECW okay. arena. Yeah. Yeah. The bingo, the bingo hall. Yeah. You know. It's like that kind of thing. Or like back in the day, like world class, like 
uh, that venue they used to run in Texas, which slips my mind right now. Was the like Death Bowl? Was it the Death Bowl? Yeah, the Sportatorium or the Memphis that the the, the Memphis Arena that but they, they are ran very for like territorial. Like it's not years. embraced by all. Right, but in Japan, it's like this is the one place for the whole country that's been the home of legendary professional wrestling and is the pro wrestling building in Japan. It dominates. Dominates. <laughs> And it's a small building, and it's con- it's considered one of the, it's considered the best building in the world to see professional wrestling. Would only, you agree with that? I thought it was the best room I've ever seen a wrestling show in. How was the food? It's only got about well, there's like hot dogs and shit for sale there, which really? is hilarious. But it's only got about two thousand seats, and then there's some standing room only areas, which I was in. That's a little bit more. You were in the standing room only. Yes. And they know you're an ambassador of improv? Yes. (laughs) Well, standing room up at, up like in the, you're up at the top, standing room only. But it's not that high because it's only a 2,000 seat room. Okay. Every seat is a good seat. The fans who come there are hardcore and super into it. And everybody turns it on because it's, the wrestlers turn it on because it's Cork and Hall. And this is like, they got to be at their best. So it's great. So my work schedule was pretty intense, but I got to go see one hour of the Pro Wrestling Noah show um, last Sunday, the um, the Global League uh, Finals, which is this tournament they've been running for a few months. Okay. And it was – got to see only the first hour of it, but it was uh, pretty awesome to get so, to be there live. was really a, – I felt very fortunate. It was a dream come true. So who did you get to see wrestle in that – in those matches, um, the most of, yeah, I don't know the Noah crew that well. Okay, Eddie Edwards was in the first match though, which a lot who a lot of our uh, listeners may know from Ring of Honor wrestling because mm-hmm. he's um, you know sort of a, a big star there and a main event guy in ROH. He was in the opener and was great. Mm-hmm. And um, I yeah I don't know if I knew or, or, or specifically remember the rest of the guys I saw in the match. Was there anybody that if like not knowing their names because obviously you're taking everything in, but is there somebody that if you saw them again, you'd go, Oh, I remember. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. definitely. I should have brought my uh, program from the show with me to <laughs> here today. Cause I had it. Um, was this, that crowd, was it that Japanese crowd where everybody's silent watching? Yeah. So the, the Japanese wrestling audience is different than the U S wrestling audience in that in the Japanese wrestling audience does not, consistently make noise during the matches yeah they're not a typical american crowd just yelling stuff no fandangoing no like doing all of that uh cat calling the ladies no they're just silent yes they're silent and then they have like these Wah! yes and when there's a high spot or a big move they will react by going what you just did or they'll clap yes and also for kicking out and kickouts and and getting out of submissions, like yeah. the fighting spirit. Yeah, so you can hear it's really surreal. Like I mean, if you ever watch it on TV, you can see it. And uh, and being in the room was kind of neat. Of like, I'm in the back, back, back of the house. It's not that far because it's a small room, but still, when when like guys are chain wrestling and stuff, it's completely silent in the arena. So you hear everything that's going on in the ring from the back of the house. You hear every sound the wrestlers are making. And it's really wild and different. Which has always confused me because, I mean, for that style, call in spots in the ring. That Did you, you hear them talking hear it, Japanese right? to each other? I would assume, and I don't know, I would assume they either can't or have to be extremely good at it. Because you would hear it. Yeah, like, I'm sure there are some guys that plan out matches or that used to, but if you just feel it out there, if yeah. that's really the... Where you truly learn your craft, not just getting beat up to no end, but that you have to feel the crowd and just do it on the fly. Yeah. Which, I, yeah. Blows I, my mind. I would guess they don't do a lot of spot calling in that. Does it, I mean, does, does it feel like they're pretty tight matches in terms of people like just sort of feeling the crowd out? Yes. Even though everybody's bone quiet? Like yeah. they just, if they're not calling spots, that means they either did it before. Yeah. Or they, well, you know, you know where the crowd's at. It's just in a different way than the U.S. crowd. Because you know that when you're hitting your big moves, they should be popping for the big moves because that's when they react. So you kind of judge that, I think. Mm-hmm. It's like, right, did we get a big reaction on that, a little reaction on that? Mm-hmm. You know when they're supposed to be cheering, and you can gauge it still. So did you get some good chants going like, you suck dick, <laughs> you suck dick, you know, something good to get the whole crowd into it more? That kind of thing doesn't happen. <laughs> no chants? No fandango? But we did get to go to some of the pro wrestling shops 
So here's something that, that we don't have in the United States that I'm very jealous of. That which they we have need to have. I I wish we have. Which is someone making rent from selling wrestling stuff. <laughs> so because this yeah. is a famous wrestling area, Tokyo Dome and Corken Hall, they have like there's maybe eight or so, eight or so pro wrestling stores mm-hmm. within a few blocks of the arena. And um, and uh, so I met a guy who a Japanese guy there who loves wrestling that sort of befriended who worked for Yoshimoto. And he what's took, his name? I could not pronounce his name. No, no. What'd you call him? <laughs> hey, you dude. Had to have like a, had a nickname. <laughs> I something. called him my wrestling friend. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. <laughs> and um, what did he call you? Uh, he called me Mark because that was that's easy. Oh, all right. Not <laughs> Mark's son. <laughs> no. Mr. Mark? Just Mark. Did you get son at all? Yeah, yeah, quite a, a bit. Of respect. Yeah, quite a bit. Quite a Mark son. Did anybody call you Mark son and then not call you Mark son anymore? After, <laughs> after, after you said that you liked wrestling? wrestling. That's right. said I liked Japanese pro Um They mostly were like amazed that I liked their wrestling and took it as a big compliment, which was kind of nice. It kind of got me in with some people, I think. That's really cool. And wrestling, of course, is, you know, pro wrestling in Japan is not, is perceived in a much more mainstream way than it is in the United States, mm-hmm. particularly in the nineties. It was like their, you know, if you counted it as a sport, it was like their third biggest sport in the nineties. I think only baseball and sumo were bigger. And, um, but you know, here it's really, you know, there's a certain connotation that comes with wrestling and being a wrestling fan. Gee, I'm not familiar with that. Mark. <laughs> but there it's not like that. It's, it's slower than reality TV here. It's mainstream. It's, like, it's comic books and it's it's reruns of Star Trek. That's wrestling, pretty much. People here see it mm. as a. Tr- a lot of people here see it as a really trashy, lowbrow like thing. that. I mean, right? And NASCAR, like that sort of yeah. market too. It's like, oh, stupid redneck stuff, mm-hmm. or or the yeah, it's just it's fake. Don't you know that? Like they're right. smarter than you. They know more about it. Right. Rather than it's a fun show. Right. But it's not like that there. It's much more mainstream and respected. And it probably has to do with the style. Like the style of the show is grounded, realistic, and respectful to the audience. Like they're not doing a bunch of trashy shit on the show either. <laughs> you know, I mean, so no one's like, being covered in feces from a bucket that's flung from the rafters. No, uh, no, May, no Japanese version of May Young giving birth to a hand. Oh, that's a shame. They're no Rosie out. O'Donnell and Donald Trump Japanese <laughs> wrestling matches. <laughs> so, real quick question on the show that you saw. Mm-hmm. What day and time was that show? It was on a noon on a Sunday. Wow, really? Yeah. Are there a lot of shows being run through the week? Um, that was the second show that week. There was a New Japan show earlier in the week that I couldn't go to, and then there was the Noah show. That's crazy. Yeah. Noon on a Sunday. Yeah, That's noon on a so Sunday. That's so awesome to go watch wrestling at noon on a Sunday. I know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they yeah, got it, was it right over Sunday. there. It started. It was like a, I think around a four-hour show. Okay, Scott, so. did you just say you needed a ride over there? I don't know. I thought you were just like, <laughs> they oh, got, man. They got it right over there. Oh, I was like, and um, I need a ride over man, there. Man, I need a ride over there. <laughs> United Airlines, I need a ride over there. <laughs> uh, so six wrestling shops. Yeah, there was like six. Yeah, maybe somewhere around that. Six or eight or so. Okay. A couple more, couple more were closed, but got to go in most of them. And we don't have it here. One of them was the official New Japan store. Mm-hmm. So they had their own store, the New Japan shop. Um, down the street, like about three blocks away from Tokyo Dome. And that was really cool. That was, a, you know, it's just merch. I mean, it's like what you would think would be. It's just like T-shirts and posters and shit, you know. Now, was it a thing where you walked in right away and you go, oh, my God, I want to buy all this stuff? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, totally. And they had like a little mini ring set up in there, small, and some of the old like items. Hornswoggle El Torito size ring? Yes. Okay. Yes. And some of the, Did like- you tell everybody about El Torito? <laughs> I just screamed ole, ole, ole <laughs> as I walked around. They loved it. A few knowing looks and <laughs> complacent nods. <laughs> so they had like some old title belts on display there, which was awesome. The, some of the old versions of the IWGP title. A bunch of wrestlers who have come there over the years autographed the walls. So the walls were covered with autographs. That was really cool. It would be rad if they were frozen in carbonite on the walls. <laughs> <They're> just, <laughs> <laughs> and then we just went some, to some other ones that are like, you know, Probably the most interesting one was the mask shop. It was all masks. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently this is a company that makes the masks for Japanese wrestlers. And they made Tiger Masks masks. And they made Jushin Thunder Ligers masks. And um, and, uh, was that them calling you back about (laughs) your mask? Japan loves trumpets. (laughs) Yeah. So they had like a million masks in there. It was super cool. And they – 
and they also sell so they make them for wrestlers and the wrestlers wear them and give them back to the shop to sell gross and some of them were selling for 10,000 US dollars it's crazy which mask was 10,000 dollars some Jushin Thunder Liger masks so, Jushin yeah, yeah, yeah. Jushin Thunder. Mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm, yeah, I heard not aware of that guy. Mm-hmm. No, I heard Dushin. <laughs> Dushin Thunder Liger. Yeah. So uh, that was cool. So those were my um, my wrestling adventures. Wow. Yeah. That is so crazy. Uh, Mark, before we get into more, uh, it's odd because there's been a guy standing behind you this whole time. Oh, yeah. I brought him back from Japan. Oh. Well, he's he's, he's kind of menacing. He's a really large guy. Yeah, this is a, a Japanese uh, independent wrestler. He's working his oh. way up through the ranks, but he actually came here with me because he wants to break into wrestling here in the U.S. Oh, well, I, thanks for bringing him by. I mean, I guess we should talk to this guy. I mean, yeah. if you don't mind, if that's okay with him, I don't want to be, I don't want to force him to do an interview. Let me he ask him. To Let do. me ask him. Oh, okay. <laughs> He'll give you a very brief interview. A very brief interview? Yes. He All will right. permit such a thing. But you must be respectful towards him. Uh, Obviously, yeah, yeah, look this, at curtain jerks. The way Steve yeah. is dressed. Curtain right. jerks never feel. Well, should I step out and give him a microphone? I mean, you uh, guys want to? Uh, if you don't mind, all right. You know, you can help yourself to the candy you brought, mm-hmm. which is delicious. By the... oh, I'm sorry, I could talk about this for hours, but let's let's talk to. What's this mm-hmm. guy's name? Uh, Hiroshi Tanashishi. Okay, well, he's wearing a mask too. That's okay. Uh, Oh hi! Welcome Hiroshi. We're this welcome to Curtain Jerks. We're a Greetings. comedy podcast uh, re- about wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we're we're big fans of wrestling, and we see that you're wearing a mask. Um, konnichiwa. Yeah, konnichiwa. Mm. Yeah, konnichiwa. Uh, mm. uh, moshi moshi. Pro wrestler. Pro wrestler. You're a pro wrestler. Pro wrestler. Mm. How how many years? I think he's counting. Uh, uh, f- uh, fifth, fifth. He's holding up his hands and his toes. Ten. 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 Ten, ten years. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Uh, uh, Any major English. Uh, yes. Speaker English. I am. Uh, me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, very well. Yeah, very uh, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah. Domo. Mm, mm. Uh, any major injuries that you've suffered uh, throughout the years? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, any ouch, ouch, uh, uh, you know, ouch. broken bones? Uh, yeah. Broke, uh, broke, uh, Broke a nose. Bro- oh, nose. you broke your nose. nose. Oh, yeah. Broke a nose. So is that why you wear this mask? I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I can, the color, uh, the color of that mask uh, is very. Uh, how yeah. do you? It's like a magenta vicious, hue. Vicious. Mask. Yeah, I guess vicious. you could. Well, intimidate opponent. Well, yeah, it's a very the vicious. The size of you would. Opponent. Yeah, it's a very vicious sort of light purple lilac uh, yeah. sort of color. Say lavender. Yeah, I guess even yeah, like a soft yeah. lavender, like a TV mm-hmm. blanket yeah, soft yeah, lavender. Yeah. Uh, my um, character. Mm-hmm. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Japanese wrestling and mask. My character name, Lavender Kitten. <laughs> Lavender kitten. I, That's a uh, vicious. <laughs> well, you got vicious uh, down pretty well. Lavender. Yeah, I think maybe you. I think you'll probably deliver. Vicious. Based on, if it was just to I, see the name on paper, I'd be like, ah. But then seeing you, I'm like, I can buy it. Uh, a further nickname. Further what? Mm, like a subtitle. Oh, okay. The surprising. The surprising, the surprising mm. lavender, lavender kitten. Aye, lavender kitten. Mm. The surprising, strong style. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Strong style. I am surprised. Strong style. Strong style. Uh, Hiro- I am here to kick, kick you ass. <laughs> CM Punk. Oh, you're after CM Punk. Aye, oh, yeah, that's a good. That's a good CM Punk. Uh, uh, so Hiroshi, yes. Lavender Kitten, the surprising. Yeah, what would yeah. you say is the major difference between Japanese wrestling and American? Ah, uh, uh, Japanese wrestling, um, strong style, strong style, tough, tough. Uh, uh, would you say dominating? Brutal. Would you dominate? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. American wrestling, um, cartoon bullshit. <laughs> cartoon bullshit. Cartoon That's a strong bull- statement right yeah. there. Pussies. Pussies? Mm. Cartoon bullshit pussies? Pussy. Is that your finishing move? Hey. Your finishing move is cartoon bullshit pussies. Uh, no, cartoon Aye. bullshit pussies pussy. Oh, sorry. I. Hey. What can you describe your finishing move or do it on Steve? Uh, but you know. Uh, 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 oh my god. 
that was an inverted uh, T-bone suplex that went straight into a pile driver book. and T-bone. an arm bar. Ah, uh, so, so, yeah. Awesome. Uh, Hiroshi, uh, how would you compare uh, the match? Sell! Sell! <laughs> you have his, uh, your sell on his Sell my throat. finisher! <laughs> sell my <laughs> finisher, bitch! <laughs> I, I'm amazed. Uh, Lavender Kid, the surprising, is, is tremendous. That is that is not cartoon uh, Hiroshi, how uh, Surprising? It's a very surprising. Very surprising. I didn't surprising? Think Hiroshi, how would these polished concrete floors compare to a Japanese ring? Uh, same. <laughs> same. Uh, same. Same. Yeah, we have very polished concrete floors. Strong style. Strong style. Uh, what, mm. what do you think of the American wrestling ring? Pussy ring. Pussy ring. Ring of pussies. <laughs> well, that sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? Trampoline ring. For pussy clowns. You think, wow, th- these are strong. Bouncy, stuff. bouncy, bouncy. Very descriptive. Trampoline for child. For child. So you're for calling CM child. Punk a child. Child pussy. Child. <laughs> is a child pussy. <laughs> well, I don't, you might have uh, the exact uh, translation on that. You may be saying what you want to say on that. Surprising. <laughs> Very surprising. <laughs> so if you were to wrestle CM Punk, where uh, would you wrestle him? No, wrestle CM Punk. Destroy. You de- okay, where would you destroy CM Punk? WrestleMania. WrestleMania. So that would be in an American uh, girl pussy ring. Yeah. Is that going to be to your advantage? Because you'll just be bouncing around. Uh, How are you going to hurt him? Outside the ring. Oh. Outside the ring. No holds barred. No mat. No mat. Mat. No mat. Anybody m- named Matt is not no allowed. Matt. No mat. Okay. Outside the ring. How about a Jonathan? Outside the ring. CM Punk surprising. Surprising. Finishing one. Uh, onto the Japanese ring of the concrete. Uh, Do you think he'll get lured in by your uh, uh, very cute kitten mask? Uh, uh, cute, uh, cute, cute kitten. Uh, cute, vicious. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, the lavender, the vicious lavender of your yeah, kitten mask. Yeah. It's like a killer clown is really what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> that you see a clown and you're like, oh, they, they can't be mean and hurtful. And but then, then you see their sharp razor teeth. Mm-hmm. That's uh, what your mask is. Uh, any stipulations of this WrestleMania yeah. match? Uh, is there stipulations common? In, uh... Uh, no, no, uh, no, not common. Not, no, not, not common. common stipulation. So no cage matches. No, no. Uh, no. Fire? No, uh, sometimes fire. <laughs> that, you know what? Fire seems a lot fire. more Some crazy C4? than a cage. Sometimes occasionally exploded. <laughs> <laughs> you said that quite well. Uh, do you want to wrestle at WrestleMania 30 in Louisiana? Have you ever been to Louisiana? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Could you say Louisiana? Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. Louisiana. Uh, it's... Uh, it's, uh, it's not Baton Rouge, but wait, what is it? It's Bomb uh, Temps. Mardi Gras. Do uh, you know yeah, about Baton American Rouge's Mardi Gras? Florida. Yeah, oh, Mardi Gras. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beads. <laughs> yeah. yeah, beads. <laughs> titties. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, some, yes. some titties are the size Flash. of beads. Flash the titties. Is that a thing that you do in Japan? No, no, no. no, no. Not for Christmas or no. perhaps Easter? Is no. that? Easter. No? Yeah, what do you guys do for Easter? Easter. Easter. Uh, uh, a crucifixion. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yes, the crucifixion. Or uh, right three days after the crucifixion. Uh, wrestle CM Punk. Crucifixion match. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, Lavender Kitten. Yeah, Hiroshi, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us. I am smarting. This back is smarting. You are lucky I did not uh, beat you, Steve Sears, with my special weapon. What? Special weapon? Yeah, what is the special weapon? It is right here. It is... Um, in American, it is a vicious weapon. In American, it's called... Uh, oh, let me just unwrap this uh, tissue. Oh, called Feather Duster. <laughs> Whoa. Vicious. Strong style. <laughs> if, uh, foreign object. I guess so, yeah. It's, that's a new foreign object. That's yours. That's like Triple H and the Sledgehammer. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you so much, hey. Lavender Kitten the Surprising. Hey. Uh, where, uh, can we follow you on Twitter? Uh, 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 surprising mm-hmm. at, at surprising lavender kitten. <laughs> that takes up a lot of characters, but okay. Mm. Thank you so much for this uh, brief uh, interview. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Arigato uh, gozaimasu. Uh, arigato, you're, arigato. You're a big guy, mas. Mm. Wow. Wow. I'm a... Mark, thanks for bringing that guy. Yeah. You're, are you good now? I don't know. Does this stand, stay here? All right. Okay, I think he's, I think he's good. All right, good. I think he's good. Good. I don't want to anger him because I, that jacked. move that he does, Steve, is 
we got to be careful because Jack uh, tends to run into the room blind, so we got to have a giant oh, Japanese yeah. wrestler blocking the door. Our so. curtain jerk general manager, Jack Swagger, might just run in and not know who he is. Oh, right. That's true. Mm. Got to be careful. Well, yeah, it's... I was going to ask you about this uh, mm. with wrestling before we get to this awesome magazine. Oh, yeah. I, I was also going to ask you, can I eat this candy you brought? Yes. Uh, split it. All right. I brought some candy from Japan. What is this called? That's a strawberry Kit Kat. A what? Strawberry Kit Kat. Okay. I would call it Japandy. <laughs> That's perfect. Um, I just want to point out, I'm opening the strawberry Kit Kat. It looks like whatever they make the chicken McNuggets out of before they cook it. Yeah. But it's oh, yeah. delicious. No wonder I like it so much. It is a pink goo covered waif hair. I got 20 nuggets the other night, Mark, and thought of you. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, for those that are professional wrestling fans that you were teaching these classes to, did mm-hmm. you ever make that comparison to if improvisation's new, that in pro wrestling that they're feeling the crowd and they're calling things on the fly and just – adapting to the situation and feeling in the moment and doing that. I, I talked about that with some of the Yoshimoto executives, you know, that was similar because some of them were wrestling fans or at least had been when they grew up, you know, and they knew the big stars, Onita, and they know Anoki uh, and all that stuff. So gangrel. Right. <laughs> so I talked about it a little bit with them because of, yeah, of course, you know, pro wrestling is very similar to, to what we do when we're improvising on stage where we just have kind of a basic outline of where we're going to go and we're filling in the dots. And, that's and if a way. joke hits, you follow it. You chase it. Yeah. So if there's somebody who has their routine and they know, oh, this character is really working well, then you just keep hamming it up or you keep pushing that character, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling out the audience and all that stuff. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> now you've really adapted. <laughs> um, were there conversations between you and the other wrestling fans about – like, How much TNA sucks? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really know TNA there. Really? Okay. Yeah. I was trying to like get to that. I'm like, Impact Wrestling and all that. They No one seemed to really know it there. So I think they Untapped must Untapped market. <laughs> yeah. Aces and Untapped ace. market. <laughs> they do get WWE pay-per-views there. But Is they, it like in England where they get it for free uh, on another day? They get it on another day, and it's like three weeks later. Three weeks so, later. So like that guy was like, the guy I was hanging out with was like, Hell in a Cell. <laughs> <laughs> can't wait and I was like hell in a cell it was like weeks ago and he's like we get it three weeks later so for some reason I don't know why they get it three weeks later but they're also only like 20 bu- it tra- it's only like $20 US to watch oh, they the pay per pay for it they do have to pay for oh, it but okay. it's not very expensive when I told him we, it's like $55 for us, he was like, what? <laughs> I, like, I, I know, wonder, that's how we feel. So I guess <laughs> their weekly programming is probably also three weeks behind also. Right? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. That'd Maybe it is. Up. That'd be totally fucked. <laughs> yeah. It's actually four weeks old. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have any wrestlers or any things where they were surprised in America, like like an El Torito or like any, any of the characters or anything like do you guys like this? Because we hate it. Oh, I know what you're asking. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure they must. Right? I didn't know if you guys had any of those conversations. Yeah. Or were you finding – who did they say were their favorite uh, American wrestlers? CM Punk. Okay. Yeah. CM Punk. Because was... of those pipe bombs? They love the pipe bombs? <laughs> I guess so. CM Punk seemed to be really over in with the Japanese fans that I talked to about, who, who keep up with the current product. What about Kane? Kane? No one mentioned Kane. Really? It seems like Kane would be popular over there. <laughs> oh, that's really going to hurt their feelings about three <laughs> Only weeks. Only Libertarian Kane. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they were like, we never liked Kane until this Libertarian. Until he became just gimmick. very respectful and straightforward <laughs> and put together. Go back and listen to last week's episode, uh, Corporate Kane Speaks, and you figure out all about why Corporate Kane is uh, doing what he's doing. Strange mm-hmm. enough, mm-hmm. hearing him first time on the podcast sounds exactly like he sounds on the TV. True. It, he does. If you, you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, Mark bought an annual program, as you put it, mm-hmm. of a WWE, well, an annual program, introducing people to the WWE This product. is like a WWE yeah. primer. Yeah. We don't have an equivalent of this in the United States, but this is a popular thing in Japan. They sell these magazines. They're, they're large magazines. They had one for WWE. They had one for New Japan. And they are meant to, they are meant for people who are not currently fans, but are interested in the product to be able to purchase and learn about it. That's so bizarre to me that they would, that they really think people would just buy it and want to learn about it. I know. Especially, and it's not like it, it's not like at a great price point to do such a thing either. Cause this was 15 bucks. Yeah. 15 bucks. 
And so it's, it's like if you want like somebody to just look at something and kind of for the first time ever and test it out, that seems a little like you'd make something smaller for like five bucks. It's you like, know? no, it's a $15 <laughs> starter package yeah. because I'm a wrestling fan. <laughs> and, yeah, and to read about it when you could watch it or there's YouTube or right. all these things, it's like, well, read up on wrestling because that'll make a lot of sense. For yeah. You. But it has these chapters in here, these the table of contents, their faces and moments, what's WWE – how to enjoy WWE, <laughs> superstars of WWE, WWE as a great entertainment, mm-hmm. and uh, my favorite, deep inside WWE. <laughs> That's like the JBL and Michael Cole show. <laughs> so it has all these uh, pictures and images to start of just sort of moments at first and then uh, explaining that all the television shows that they have and then the titles mm-hmm. and different types of pay-per-views and stipulations of matches. And then going into what WrestleMania is and this unbelievable picture of Triple H with hearts around him. <laughs> I don't understand that at all. That's the dating I have no section. no idea what that is. This is such – and Yoshitatsu is all throughout this magazine. Yes. They feature to, they feature Yoshitatsu in this magazine as if he is like a, at least like semi-main event level star. When in reality he hasn't been on Raw in like three years probably. <laughs> This is the wildest photo right here because it looks like they're hanging out together, like there's some sort of comic book duo the rock of and the Rock and Undertaker. Mm-hmm. They've been photoshopped it next to each other. Oh my God, we got to take so many photos of these and post them online. And then there's a page, I think six pages in, amongst the really the prominently featured uh, superstars. I mean, we're going from like your Randy Orton's and Dolph Ziggler's into a page that contains Big Show. Mr. McMahon and Yoshitatsu. <laughs> Yoshitatsu is on the same page as Vince McMahon. And whatever this credit is that he has right here, it says WWE and ECW. Uh, ECW is in the same line. It's so amazing. The ladies, of course, the divas. And oh, the this movies. is hilarious. I know. There's a two pages dedicated to su- it's called it says superstars on the screen in English. And it's like a little feature on WWE films. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, it's the Marine trilogy and the Twelve Rounds movies, and see no evil, uh, and the Chaperone, and the Chaperone, and the Condemned. <laughs> oh my God, this thing is amazing. <laughs> this was only fifteen dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is. Wait, so... wait, I'm sorry. Does that say Visual Arts of the WWE? Yes. Yes. So signs. It's posters for pay per view shows. These are pictures of all the posters of recent pay-per-views. Oh my God. And some sort of comic book with Undertaker and CM Punk. Yeah. This At is WrestleMania. The Japanese cartoon I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> we'll put pictures of all this on the uh, oh on the Facebook. Uh, yeah, this and then as and then <laughs> I, a closing article <laughs> of, about Taka Michinoku. And then there's also a picture with Austin and a fanny pack giving Taka the bird. <laughs> And Taka's surprise. Well, Taka Mishinoku, there's like a three-page story here on Taka Mishinoku. Because, you know, he, he had a very brief run in WWE in like late 90s probably, right? Uh, SmackDown's number one announcer? Maybe yeah, like earlier than that. 97 oh, was that or Naki? so? That's and then Naki. like up until 2000, 2001. Something like that. But now he's a huge star in Japan. He's 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 still as active he in his be. big star. Awesome. So they've they've had this large article about him as if he is like was like a big star in, in the U, in the U.S. too, which he wasn't. But and what was this page here? They've got a um, you know Tenzai. Killer Khan. Is that? Oh, oh no no no! That, I thought that was Tenzai, but it's not. It's <laughs> not. It's, that's Killer Khan. Sorry. That's a template for uh, Tenzai. <laughs> they got a legend section. This thing. This thing is truly, truly well, amazing. That is, that's a giant stick. And, and this is a photo gallery of WWE wrestlers in Japan over the years. Oh, no, wait, is that the uh, the steak shop? That yeah, where Cena Ribera. wore those weird pants. Yeah, this is um this famous steak shop in in Japan, which I did not get a chance to go to, called Ribera Steakhouse, which was the um the uh, sort of um the Brown Derby. <laughs> Of professional wrestling, the yeah. planet Hollywood, in, the planet of professional wrestling restaurants in uh, in Japan. Whoa, whoa! Did you say plural professional wrestling restaurants? I guess you mean professional wrestling restaurants. <laughs> oh my god! Is that an ad for Les Mis? Yes. yes. At the very end, the last page, there's an ad for Les Mis. <laughs> how do you you keep calling it Les Mis? Why are you saying Les Mis? Yeah, because the that's Miz how is I, not in it. It's Les Mis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, they're going to do that now, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> make late music. Uh, well, we got to talk about 
uh, some wrestling that happened this week. Uh, this big thing. Do that we happened. have to? <laughs> Why can't we talk more about Japan? <laughs> well, I was. I'd be so curious to see a Japanese crowd's reaction to the Shield versus the Wyatt family that <laughs> broke out on Raw for that. Oh, that was there. awesome. Mm-hmm. Do you think they'd go a hoo Yeah, they'd go, ah. Because they're big fans of Sen of Woman. As yeah, well. I was about to say, an Al Pacino <laughs> fans. But this seems to be leading up to a Survivor Series match of a six-on-six, six, which I don't think they've done before, I, of I, numbers-wise. I, th- I, think, I don't think they're doing that. You don't think they're doing that? I think they already announced that CM Punk and Daniel Bryan are facing two of the Shield guys at Survivor Series. Really? Yeah. Yeah, as we were watching it, you were saying this should be a WrestleMania event. Yeah. I, let, you want me to look this up as we're talking? You can look it up. Sure. I think that's true. Uh, all right. I, I think it's going to be a six on six. I think it's going to be the Roses uh, and the Usos and uh, Cena, or not Cena, uh, Brian, and, Brian Punk. and Punk versus uh, the Shield and the Wyatts. God, but they don't like each other. Maybe that's what's going to happen. But they have a common enemy. They're going to put it together and their common enemy isn't going to be enough and they're not going to be able to work together. Could be. What's after Survivor Series? What's the paper? TLC. TLC. Oh. Under love and care. That's uh, when they really get along. Yeah, that's when they really work out their issues. I, I can imagine them doing Survivor Series and then S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, Wyatt Family doesn't make it work. And so they uh, end up having some sort of match at uh, TLC together. They implode. They implode. What's oh. after TLC? Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Yeah. Buddy. And it's re- then we're into WrestleMania season. The road to WrestleMania. The road to WrestleMania. Oh, you can learn all about it in this annual magazine. <laughs> that's three weeks old. Uh, okay, yeah, WWE announced, it's not the Shield, WWE announced that CM Punk and Daniel Bryan are wrestling the um, Rowan and Harper of the Wyatt family. At Survivor Series? At Survivor Series. Oh, I hope they they realize that there's a better thing to do. And make Which it a is a Survivor classic Series Survivor match. Series match. Yeah. I, don't know, why, I wish they'd even call it a classic Survivor Series match. They could just call it a Survivor Series yeah. match. Yes, they could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, a vintage Survivor Series match. <laughs> Uh, well, it's time for the plug of the week, which is this week is laugh on behalf, which Mark, that's your thing. That's mm. something you started. Yeah. Uh, we started this, uh, all volunteer organization, um, sort of a collective. And our goal is to produce live comedy events that exist, that benefit existing charities, existing nonprofits and that dominate. We will dominate <laughs> the red cross. <laughs> <laughs> Make a wish foundation. We will dominate you. <laughs> um, so um, you've had your first event. We recently. just had our first event, which uh, was we called the Detroit Party. It was here in Los Angeles, and it um, ben- I'm from Detroit, and it benefited um, sc- um, the up and coming RoboCop movie. Yeah, <laughs> I wish <laughs> it, it, it uh, gave funding to uh, a charity called the Detroit Pre- Creativity Project, which teaches improvisation and um, other arts classes in Detroit schools free of charge. And then uh, hopefully run another one um, coming up this spring for another charity. Now, but we're at laughonbehalf.com, so check it out. I'm sure at this event you didn't have any stars like a Paul F. Tompkins or even a Keegan-Michael Key. We, we actually, we did not have Keegan-Michael Key because Keegan <laughs> oh, was sure. out of town. <laughs> what yeah. a bastard, that guy. But we had some great stars. Mary Lynn Reischub, who used to be on, um, on 24. 24. People know her from Chloe, 24. Mr. 24. Show. And um, uh, Paul F. Tompkins performed and Fred Willard performed. Oh. and. Uh, yeah, we had. Um, what did Paul F. Tompkins end up doing? Because I know you said he was. Yeah, so Paul, Paul F. Tompkins did his um, Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber character. Oh, that's awesome. Because <laughs> we, he said, we asked him if he'd do the show, and he said, yeah. And he said, but I'm not going to do it as myself. I'm going to do it as a character. Right. So we were like, okay, can we still advertise it as you? Because that's what helps with the fundraising. And he was like, oh, yeah, 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 of course. But so so he so he had me introduce him as his Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber character, and mm-hmm. he did this really hilarious stand up bit in that. Well, we're going to be releasing a podcast, a free podcast, as part of Comedy Podcast Network, okay. with some of the highlights and some of the best acts from that night. So it'll be up on comedypodcastnetwork.com dot oh. uh, probably within the next few weeks. Phil, uh, our producer for Curtain Jerks, is producing uh, that podcast as well. We're going to have it up online. That's amazing. Yeah. And then if people want to make donations, because it's not like it's it stopped, it's an ongoing thing, right? That's right. So people they can, can donate at create DetroitCreativityProject.org. Well, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Um, and it is time for Jerk Tweets. Each week, go to Twitter.com and follow us at Curtain Jerks and send us your hashtag Jerk Tweets. I am Alex Root says, in your opinions, who is the one wrestler WWE has dropped the ball with the most? Ooh, Yoshitatsu. <laughs> 
According to this annual, I don't think so. Yeah, maybe, you know what? Maybe they're actually turning that around. Takamishinoku? Oh, no yeah. No way. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I'd say Zack Ryder. Like, it has uh, to be Zack Ryder. That guy got so popular for himself. On his own, yeah. On his own. People are chanting for him. They want to see him. There's still signs in the crowd that say, we want Ryder. He yeah. was on Raw on Monday. Are you sure they're not Hawking talking about goods. Bob Ryder? From, Ooh, they might have been talking from, about Bob Ryder. From OneWrestling.com. <laughs> Uh, TNA current TNA employee is he? Yeah. Oh, good for him. <laughs> uh, what well, people in Japan don't know who he is. <laughs> but I'd say Zack Ryder. What about you guys? I would uh, second the Zack Ryder. I think. Um, I don't know. I you know I'm kind of bitchy about this Daniel Bryan stuff as a lot of the IWC is right now. But I wouldn't say that they dropped the ball on the most. But. I think they got to take him out of that title picture for a little bit to then ramp it up for Road to WrestleMania. So you give him that feud in the meantime with Shield and Wyatt's. And then Royal Rumble, you drop him back in the picture? Yeah. You do the filler guys in between. You know, you're doing your big show and whatever. That fizzles out. The champ is established. And then you put him back in. Mark is God. sneering. That Mark is sneering. Can you imagine if John Cena said that? The champ is established. <laughs> uh, it's like watching your English teacher wrestle. I think maybe I would also say Ryback to a certain degree. Because I think they should have just gone all the way with him early on when he was getting over as in the Goldberg gimmick, as the unstoppable babyface monster. So and what, they went to Hell second base? Huh? They only went to second base? They didn't hit a home run? Well, he, they went to Hell in a Cell with him against... That pay-per-view where he went a year ago with CM Punk a year ago at Hell in a Cell, I think they should have put him over on that pay-per-view and just gone all the way with him and at least right. let him hold the title for like a month or something. But I think it really... It was weird. That pay-per-view did an abnormally high buy rate. He was getting over, mm -hmm. and he was selling tickets, and he was selling pay-per-views, and they killed him on that. And I don't think he's ever recovered from it, really. All right. But it was weird because it was nobody, 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 and then it felt like he got into the title picture very fast. There yeah. wasn't enough jumps, I feel like, yeah. to get there. Although they've still got some juice out of him. You know, I, I think Zack Ryder's a really good pick. Yeah. Where it's like, this guy could have been a huge star and just wasn't. Maybe and they should just merch. swap gimmicks. Let oh. Ryback have a little uh, video show for himself, and yeah. then Ryder woo, woo, woo. becomes unstoppable. I eat it. Yeah. yeah. No, woo, woo, woo. I eat you. <laughs> <laughs> what about Loki? Loki was somebody they dropped the ball. Caval. On. Caval. He was he was really over after that NXT. They and putting him up with the Michelle McCool and Layla like that. He ran uphill with that. that yeah. That was the hardest struggle to get yeah. over. Of the worst pairing that it could have been. Yeah. And he managed to do it. Yeah. And and um, and um uh, the gimmick was that what they were bringing in him in for was they were going to bring him in as evil, an evil version of Rey Mysterio to feud with Rey. Mm -hmm. And then they never did that. I think that's a, I think that was a missed opportunity. There's a big missed opportunity. With yeah. Paul. Cause that would have, that could have been sweet. Yeah. He was, he was really good. Yeah. Yeah. You agree with all these, Steve? Yes. Uh, and then I, the rock. I feel like they really dropped the ball on it. <laughs> uh, Chris Bickley 5 says, if you can invent a new gimmick match that has never been done before, what would it be and who would be in it? Whoa. That's new. heavy. But I feel like they're always trying to make up new gimmick matches, right? That's why we're going to so give them many. One. We're uh, going to give them one. I'd say, okay, first off, do away with the normal ropes. Rubber band ropes. <laughs> Oh, so like, like, so you can really get some space And then space there's like additional time. steps on the outside of the ring, so you can really get back and launch yourself. <laughs> what about well, what about when Vince Russo created the backwards battle royal in TNA a couple of years ago? Remember that? Right, that throw people into the ring? Yes, they did this on TNA television. Oh, that's right. They did this on Impact. God, I you had to fight in, get into the ring, over the top rope, into the ring, and that's when you were safe. <laughs> and then you did. Your <laughs> That's terrible. Then did you fight anybody once you got? I don't even ring? remember. See, yeah, that's the thing that you can spitball all you want, but when he's just spitballing and they go, "All right, let's put it on TV." <laughs> this is why we're filtering right now. Yeah. yeah. So okay, I say rubber band ropes. Uh, I'd like to see the uh, what's the match from Ready to Rumble with the the, the three tier. Uh, that was a match. That was, was a WCW match. What? Yeah, they did that. Get yes. out of town. Really, yeah. dude. We're yeah. gonna show you this on YouTube. The three level, the three stack cages on top yeah. of each other. Yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was called. I'm sure people at home right now are going, oh, it's a, that know, was the know, Mayan know, Pyramid of Death. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'll tell you one I'd bring back. Ooh, what would you bring back? War Games, the best gimmick match of all time. Two it takes rings? Up so many seats. <laughs> I guess so. The thing I never understood 30 is... 30 extra seats you can't sell. Why not make it a gigantic ring? Hey, why, that'd be cool. Why have Ooh. it be two rings? Man, it's right. so simple. A bigger ring. <laughs> a super big ring with a super big cage. Yeah, super big, super cage. Yeah. That's what it's called. And then you have the, if you want to make the separation between the two, maybe you do put a cage in the middle, uh, like a cage door, so that way guys can get separated from one another. Yes. Like your team could get uh, separated. Oh, that'd be that's awesome. Cool. That'd that's be good. very cool. That's good. All right, so we're, 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 uh, Fiddling with the war games. Super okay, cage. Have super, super cage. Super big ring. Yep. Super cage. Uh huh. Just say it's, super cage. And then there's a really big cage around it. Yeah. Of super size. Thank you. Uh, and then a door in between. Anything else that you add to this? I don't Who know. do you put barking in this match? dogs? <laughs> okay, barking dogs. I like this. On the outside, or there are they in the no, ring? No, they just pipe in barking dog noise. Oh, they pipe it in. Yeah. Okay, uh, is that Titus O'Neil just doing it? In no, the no, no. It's, uh, they have uh, they have a couple German shepherds and a sound booth. Okay, who do you put in this match? Brock Lesnar's got to go in to establish it. Well, you right need away. to. You need a couple. Would be great is to have like a Wyatt's versus the Shield type vibe. Okay, a couple like teams that hated each other you know like in the war games it was always like the horseman versus the baby face team right. of the day that they were feuding stings with, you know? painted face friends yes <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that'd be good to have like a wyatt's versus shields type thing shield so we I mean. got to add a couple members to the shield so i say mark henry to join the shield yeah you get a big tactical vest for him mm -hmm. you throw him in there a very big tactical vest mm -hmm. a uh, super vest uh or a vest that's just really, really big. I, I, I thought Kane was going to join the Wyatt family. I thought he was going to become the creepy, weird Leatherface guy to join their little creepy clan. No, just a libertarian. <laughs> no, they just kidnapped him and, you know, he just... No matter what, he is guy. definitely creepier now without that mask wearing a suit. <laughs> it is so awkward. It'd be, you know what would be funny? You know what would be really funny, guys? What? As if he started um, practicing law and he told everyone he was Kane's brother. <laughs> mm, the <I> undertaker <laughs> <laughs> i think to close out the show uh i know what? we're running close tight it out yeah we're, we're just getting started well i've gotten big news you went to japan yeah. you're not the only person that i hear went to japan Who, oh really yeah somebody else our our special correspondent jeff hardy ah he's getting a lot of flack right now he's he's got a big album coming out oh. he just released a music video yes um, hardy son uh, oh yeah, Jeff Hardy son, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, I think, are uh, he, as he's known, Party son, Mister Party, Mister Party son. <laughs> yeah, that's right, very clever. Uh, that's Mister Mister Party. <laughs> I don't know where he's at right now, but I figure we should call him up because I think he's trying to make a deal about selling his record to Japan. Oh uh, yeah, you should give him a call because uh, people in America are not excited about it. Let's that record, that he's got that mu new music video and everything. Yeah, what'd you say about it, Mark? You know, I thought um, <laughs> that's all right. We can give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's uh, it's ringing. Found what everybody's thinking about every other day, and you get yourself a trap, and then you find yourself a life, and then you get yourself a butter, thing. and he you get a and you eat yourself a cup phone. of coffee, and you Jeff go. Jeff Hardy. Oh, hello, hello. You you're singing again when you when you <laughs> pick up the phone. Oh no, man, that was, that was me. That was, that was that was my ringtone. All right. It wasn't, but okay, if your ringtone was still going when you answered the phone. Ah, oh, you got me, man. It's a hidden track off my new album. It, it is a hidden track. So yeah. you have your new album coming out. Yeah, Plurality of Worlds, available oh. now on ShopTNA.com. Jeff Hardy, uh, we have Mark Wozeka sitting in with us today. Hey, Mark Wozeka, how you doing? All right, man, how are you? Good, just out on assignment, mm -hmm. doing my job. Where mm -hmm. are you? We haven't given you a job. Where are you right now? Uh, Yokohama. <laughs> Yokohama. I think so. I, I don't see a sign, but I think it's Yokohama. Is it blacklit there? <laughs> nah, I am. <laughs> where where is Yokohama? What country are you in right now? I'm in Japan. You're in Japan. Yeah. Wow. So it's true. Yeah. What was there a rumor going around? I'm on assignment. There are rumors going around. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna catch a show. Uh, and then Be maybe, in it or no confirm? no. I'm gonna catch a show. I'm gonna go to a couple wrestling shops. And then I'm also going to find out a little bit about the culture of Japan, you know, and get you guys a real good exclusive. Uh, okay, Jeff, I got to burst your bubble oh, right there. Sorry, man. Mark Orzeka just did that. He I just did you, that. I beat you to it, buddy. 
Oh, no. Oh, man, that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> he even brought back a, a wrestler, an independent Japanese wrestler. Yeah. Oh, who'd you guys get? You get a, a Scarlet Kitten? What's his name? The Surprising Lavender Kitten. That is the uh, Lavender Kitten, the, the Surprising. surprising. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah, I, knew, I know him from the circuit. Have you guys wrestled each other? No, no, no. That guy's stiff. Oh, okay. Mm. Throws potatoes and expects receipts. <laughs> Stop! Je- is, that, is that you, Scarlet? <laughs> is that you? <laughs> yeah, Jeff Hardy. Lavender. Blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> they love it when I do this. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Did he- ah, he chopped me. <laughs> he chopped me. Chop on. Ah, Chop no. Scott, are you okay? Chop. No. No. Chop. My nipple's gone. No, <laughs> what? Oh, it's on my shirt. Oh, oh here. Oh, thank you. Is everything all right over there? I just heard a big chopping noise. No, my nipple's been chopped off. Oh, yeah. That's how I that, I got both of mine replaced. Can you tell us about your album? Yeah, The Plurality of Worlds. Yeah. Of, uh, available on ShopTNA. How do you, are you feeling good about this? Yeah, man. It was like a, every song on that album was like a therapy session for me. <laughs> tell us uh, one of your favorite lyrics from your songs. Uh... Gotta find it. Got God to find it. You're gonna find it. Once we found it, we found each other. Is that about? Is that about you in a relationship? Or? Nah, man. It's just about me working through stuff. Like I was looking for my keys one day, and I was like, I gotta find it, cause I had to go out to my car to use the bathroom, cause my bathroom was busted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, are you, how, how are your sales doing for this album so far? I gotta admit, a lot of Americans so far are not excited about this. They're giving you a lot of flack. You know, it's not really so much about sales. It's more about Google Analytics and trying to figure out where the numbers lie. So I guess you could say, I don't know. Uh huh. How are the 14 year old girls taking it? Are they really excited about this? Does it does it really reach them? Were you Did you have them in mind when writing these songs? Yeah, I guess you could say I'm reaching pretty deep inside 14 year old girls. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you, that's what you want to say. No. Well, I no. I think my music speaks to everybody on a really deep level. Like. Uh, some people think that if you're in a music video and you keep showing footage of yourself looking unsure about the track that you just laid down, <laughs> right? I think it shows depth and a little bit of subtlety and maybe a little bit of intricate feelings. Other people might just think you're not sure about the music you just made. That's what I thought when I watched your music video, which has that in there. All right. It really seems like you don't know if you're happy with your own no, song. But see, Scott, those are special effects. Of you looking confused? Yeah, like I'm in front of a green screen and I've got makeup on my face. That's just me working through my music. Okay. Um, and this is your new entrance song in TNA. What? Yeah, you come out to this song now. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You came out to another song why of would, yours before. Why would I? Yeah, I'd come out to a, a rocket song that I did. Why would I come out to such a, like an introspective song about how I deal with life and how I wish things were different? Why I would think I, you do. I'm honestly, uh, I'm. TNA bullshit. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, that's a challenge laid down right there. Bullshit. You know, I, I understand a lot of people in Japan don't know about TNA, so I'm honored to know that Violet Fever, the Scarlet Kitten, would have even uh, he's got to but- find it, got got to find he's it. He's butchering gonna your find name. Gonna find it when I he's, find it. I, gonna I don't find wanna... each other. Adi-san. Uh-oh. Hello. TNA. Tits and ass. Yeah, that's, you know, a lot of people make that misconception, but it's pretty true. Knockout Division's pretty great. <laughs> Well, Jeff, I, I hope the album goes well, and I hope you... Maybe me too! <laughs> I hope something goes well for you in Japan. I hope you catch a show or sell a couple albums. Yeah, I'm about to get a sushi hot dog. Oh, all right. Well, good that's luck a, with that's that. That's a roll of sushi inside of a hot dog bun. Okay. Well, Jeff, it was nice But you don't you. slice it, so you can't tell what's inside it. Well, but you'll bite into it. Yeah, but when you look at it, you can't tell what's in it. Well, I also only look down at sushi. I don't look into it. Okay, we'll take a bite right now. What did you, you get? Oh, it's eel. All right. Well, but no, no. Urchin. It's urchin. Urchin. Okay, well, that's like an disgusting. orange B.O. butter. Those are gonads. Did what? you know that? Those aren't gonads. They are. They're not gonads. L- talk a- to Eric Young. It was on Off the Hook Extreme Catches. What are you telling me that the uh, the meat and the sweet meat inside of an urchin is a gonad? That's right. Well, I guess you could say I got a big mouthful of hot dog and gonad. All right, well, say hi to those 14-year-old girls for me. Well, they only I can't talk to them. They just scream. Okay. Well, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> it's excitement. Oh, hell. <laughs> That's Jeff Hardy. Wow. That was a 
fascinating interview. He's very intrepid. He's like our National Geographic field reporter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Mark, any closing thoughts about Japan and uh, the wrestling scene in Japan? Well, it's uh, you know I would encourage everybody, if you're interested in any of the Japanese pro wrestling stuff and you've never seen it, uh, I'd encourage you to Google some stuff on um, New Japan Pro Wrestling, especially this recent stuff. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube. I, I think they just... Um, I think they just leave it up there because they want you know any Americans right. to watch it, and all their big shows get posted on YouTube. And particularly, you could Google Hiroshi Tanahashi; he's the big star in New Japan right now, and all of his big matches have been fantastic. Hiroshi Tanahashi. Yes. All right, we'll put that on our Facebook mm-hmm. and Twitter, so that mm-hmm. way you'll know how to spell it. Mm-hmm. And thanks for letting me uh, come chat about this uh, Japan trip. You're Thank always you. welcome here, Mark. And, of course, you got to go to uh, check out what Mark's doing with Laugh on Behalf. Again, what's the website or our Twitter? It's laughonbehalf.com. And then on Twitter as well? Laugh on Behalf. At Laugh on Behalf on Twitter. So, and you can donate well, that, and help out. at Laugh on Behalf, not at Laugh on Behalf on Twitter.com. Right. <laughs> Just okay. at Laugh on Behalf. And, of course, uh, still rate and review the podcast on iTunes. And send us proof of that, curtainjerks at gmail.com. And we'll send you a personalized message of one of your favorite characters thanking you for rating and reviewing the show on iTunes. And that's right. So, for Curtain Jerks, I'm Scott Narver. I'm Steve Sears. I'm Mark Corsica. Enjoy wrestling, kids. receive this transmission from the Comedy Podcast Network. For more shows, visit comedypodcastnetwork.com.